online campus, Emmanuel Church in-person campus, and Pastor Jake Bunjo. Fun fact, this is the first time I'm seeing Pastor Jake Bunjo. <laughs> it's true. In it's true. Like a week. I think it's been like a week. Just about. Just yeah. about a week. Just about. I, we, you see, I had to keep the logo off the screen so we don't get in trouble, but my happy energy drink for the morning. I've been traveling. I got in at one. I have landed at midnight. I almost said noon. At midnight last <laughs> night, I came to noon. church. We got some lights designed. We've been grinding since the morning. A couple hours of sleep, so I'm awake. I'm excited, and it's good to see you again, Jake. I had, I had a good night's sleep. I, I was here. You jealous. Know, so, jealous. Wait, you were here for a good night's sleep? No, 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 just in PA. Oh, 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 I thought you meant yeah. at the church. In my own bed. Yeah, I missed you know. out. So we want to welcome you to pre-service live. We are yeah. so glad you have joined us this morning. Hey, we have, I, I really have to find a new word. So, awesome. I, I really, like someone can seriously, someone buy me at the source because at I this point you. it's getting pretty bad. I'll Amazon we buy have, one for you. We have a great service coming up though. We, we really do. do. Mark's going to be continuing his new sermon series, The Seven Greatest Words of Love. Mm -hmm. And do you know what word we're talking about this week? Uh, I don't. We're talking about love. Seven oh, I did know that. I did know that. I read that. Love. I so, read that. My bad. Sounds pretty important to me. So make sure you stay tuned in for that. Oh, yeah. That is going to be a really awesome message, really awesome. important for you to hear. Oh, there's one. I'm pulling up the Facebook stream here. And I got YouTube. If there you're is... on YouTube, say, hey, let me know you're here. I would love to shout you out. Yeah, lots morning. of folks. Good morning. And good morning. Good morning. If Man. you're in the building, wow. you might notice something. I was going to say, I noticed something a little different when I got here. You might notice that we have some more chairs Ooh, in the worship center, which is, I mean, that makes me I'm excited. excited. I'm pumped up. However, we are still practicing social distancing. We, we want to give you as much room as possible. That's right. Because I don't know if you all have noticed, but we got some, we got people in the house. And people in the house. People in the house. People so at the house get, and people in the yeah, house. That's like it. it. That's it. So if you are in the house, hey, we have more chairs, but we are still asking you to social distance for your safety and the safety of others. Yeah. We just want to give you a heads up. So it's going to look more full today. It feels more full. I'm excited. For sure. But I am excited. Shout so out to the PA practice. travel ban lift. <laughs> that We're moving forward. We're getting safer. We're moving, moving forward. forward. Hey, I want to remind you at home, it's sad. We have wrapped our fam fun night basket giveaways, but that does not mean that we have wrapped signing in. Please, 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 I'm please do it right now. make sure oh, I'll see if I can, I can never do it and talk at the same time. So, hey, make sure that you sign in on the app, the Church Center app. There's instructions on the screen below you if you don't know how to do that. And I do want to announce our final basket giveaways, Jake. Do this it. is exciting. This is exciting. I don't, you're going to have to help me. Because I never, I hate when people mispronounce the last names. I can do the second one. Do you know? That's, well, it's Nicole Abbott. And? and Matt Gomes. Matt Gomes. Matt Gomes. Nicole up? Abbott, congratulations. I know that guy. Hey, we know him. He's on we, our we know him. youth worship band. Hey, make sure. He was. Uh, <laughs> he make sure you still sign anymore. in and, and those two uh, just reach out to the office and we'll connect you with your fam. Fun night basket, devotions, a movie, snacks. I heard there was a leftover we get to take home. Did oh, you hear about that? I didn't hear about that. I just heard oh, about that. that just made my morning. Hey, that was a lie, but I'm trying to look, speak it into existence. In that announcement, you could have been checked in. I'm checked in. I'm good to go for today. You, you should check been in. It really doesn't take that long. It helps us out a lot. Yeah. So sign in. You know what ahead. else helps out a lot? What helps out? Emmanuel a lot? Church to its local community. And there's another way this week. Uh, is it happening this week? It, it is. is happening this week. There's another way that you can help us reach out to our community, and that is with another blood drive. We've been doing these for the majority of quarantine, I feel like. Yeah, we've had a it's bunch. Been, we've had a lot. We've had a lot. So thanks for uh, continuing to give blood, those of you who are able. And we just wanted to let you know that for the next two weeks on Monday, that's tomorrow, uh, the 8th and the 15th, um, we have other or, or new uh, sessions of a blood drive. Um, so you can sign up. And you can go to the website and find instructions for that um, at lansdale.church. Mm. So thank you yeah, for check giving that blood. Out for sure. By the way, before I move on to this next announcement, I have to shout out. We have oh. people joining us from South Korea. Oh, let's so go. It's this morning here, but it's Sunday night there. That's right, people. That's how time zones work. Isn't this world amazing? We also so, have Fort Myers Beach. Oh, Good, sunny, warm oh. morning. Deanna, thanks. Man. I know I'm not for your to be warm jealous, wishes. but I'm jealous. So, hey, also, I want to talk about some new things that we have going on starting next week. Got some new stuff. 
lots new of new stuff. New is great, and new is happening here at Emmanuel next week. So the first new thing that's happening is a new connect group meeting every Sunday morning called Better Than Babylon. This oh. is a connect group for adults of all ages to come and work through the difficulties of these COVID times as we pray for one another and then discuss the application or challenges raised by the previous week's sermon. So this is going to be during first service. First service. Better Than Babylon. Better Than Babylon. Adult small group. That's happening next week. So come at 9 a.m. It'll be in room 131, 132. You're not going to want to miss that. Also... Kids are meeting on Sunday mornings. Noah's walking away from me hey. and taking stuff with him. Kids are meeting on Sunday mornings, and we have a teen group meeting on Sunday morning starting next week as well. All this is happening next week. Wow. So teen group will be happening it, during first service in the youth room. We call that Roots. It's a youth Bible study. It's awesome. We have a lot of fun. Talk about some stuff in the Word. It's great. Mm -hmm. We have kids worship going kids. on. You're not if, if we've. Been and doing that for a couple weeks and preteen group and preteen group. Whoa, it's Whoa. back better than ever. We're, we're back, people. Like, we are back, we're back, back, back. Like, I'm Chris Burns. Almost full swing. You get that reference, thank you. So, that's a real hey, country music fan. Right if, there. If you, no, it's actually not. Oh, not it's country? Not. No, my bad. So, next week, if you want to be part of our Better Than Babylon, if you have kids, you want to bring them to kids' ministry, if you have teens, you want to bring them back to youth Bible study, hey, we got all that going on next week we really hope we will see you next week here for that that's next week and in two weeks another thing that we're very excited to yo we've been let's excited make for, it happen we've been excited about this for i a think while. it's been all of 2020 we've been planning for the upward fam jam and we are so excited for Friday, March 19th, you can register. Hey, just a reminder, if you registered for the previous one that we had to cancel, the registration does not carry over. Okay, okay so important. just make sure you just re-register online. Uh, it's a free event, but we just need to know and expect how many people are coming. Um, but you can come. It is uh, lansdale.church slash kids to find the registration for that and sign up for all the fun, games, prizes, family blessing, and more while collecting pantry items to be donated to Manna on Main Street. So not only are we blessing you, but we're giving you an opportunity to continue to bless the Lansdale community. So thank you for registering for that. It's a drive-through event through our parking lot. It's gonna be, I, I have a little bit of insider information. He does. He it's does. gonna be lit up like an upward intro. There's gonna be music, there's gonna be basketballs. It is gonna be pretty great. So I would encourage you to make sure you get a car together with your kids, maybe some neighborhood kids. Make sure you're inviting people in the community out for our Upward Fam Jam. It's from 7 to 8.30 p.m. One more time, lansdale.church slash kids. I like, all right, and while we talk about that announcement, pray, pray, pray for a sunny day. Sunny. A sunny, uh, not a sunny night. There's no such thing. Sun, a yeah. clear night. Clear night. Because, listen, I have been chomping at the bit. I'm ready. I'm so ready for this Upward event. We, we want to be together for that event. It's really going to be an incredible event. So Boom. Let's, let's, be there. let's pray that it goes on. Hey, I want to let you know how you've been impacting the community in this season. Because, yeah. well, so the Fam Jam, they, they have an opportunity to do it. As a matter of fact, I, I got to shout out my teens. Can I do that? Yeah, you I'm can. I'm going to do it. So we've been collecting some food and items to take over to the Boys and Girls Club. Awesome. Because we, we have a heart for the Boys and Girls Club. In non-COVID times, we were actually over there every week volunteering, mm -hmm. helping out with their homework help program. They're still not open in person. The one right in Lansdale is still not open in person. Yep. However, they do do online homework help. That, that was a bad choice of you words. You dropped the duty, but, uh, And they also, every week, they invite people who would be at the club to come in and pick up snacks, pick up craft bags. So we took over some snacks for them to include in that, and we made some craft bags for them to be able to include in that. Yeah. The timing of it was amazing. We went in and got to talk to Rachel, who's one of the leaders over there. So that's how us back in the youth room were impacting the community. Like you heard with the Fam Jam, they're collecting stuff for the community. And then you guys, oh my goodness, Noah, this, and this announcement brings me joy. I love so it. we've been talking about the Merino sock drive, wool sock drive for a yeah. while. We talked about the sock box. Sock Still box. one of my favorite words, phrases. I heard that the sock box got pretty full. It got pretty full. It got pretty full. Your guys' hearts were really full, and our sock box was even more full, because here's what happened. Oh, yeah. You guys donated socks. You guys donated money to go towards socks, and all that put together, we were able to collect slash purchase a total of 89 pairs of wool socks, 
and that is going to go to homeless people out in the community who really need them because, hey, these, these mornings are still cold. If you walked chilly. outside this morning, it's still pretty chilly. They, chilly. they really need that, and so that's 89 from, from us alone. And then on top of that, so some of you went to, how do you say that, Bombas? Uh, yeah, I think that's right. Some of you went there to purchase your socks, and they did a deal Bombas? where if you purchased socks from them, they would donate an additional pair. So you bought one, they donate one, and there was 56 additional pairs donated because of purchases made there. Y'all, that is serving the community yeah. in a real way. People are going to be impacted by your giving, by you bringing socks here, by you donating to that uh, purpose, to that what was the word I'm looking for? Campaign fund. Yeah, to that. Incredible. To that. Awesome. I forget yes. words sometimes. Hey, but. thank you for that. Quick math. Uh, 89, 56. I don't know. Put it in the chat. How many socks did we give we out? Did, I, we, I wasn't good in math. I, it wasn't written for me. If it wasn't written, I'm not doing it. It's too early. I, I don't know. Hey, thank you for joining us online. We just wanted to put a little plug in reminder there. That's an awesome celebration. Dang it, you got me on the awesome train. That is an incredible celebration of one way that you guys are giving back to the community. And we just want to, for our regular attenders, just put a moment aside. Would you talk about giving for us, Jake? Yeah. So... If you're a regular attender, now is a great time to just open up the app or, or however you give, go online and just to give for this moment, to give your tithe or if you have an yeah. offering for something specific this week, we, we want to give you this moment to do that. If you're not a regular attender, though, you're good. Yeah, that's, that's, we, we want you to, that's to experience Emmanuel, to be filled up before you feel like you have to give. Hey, we have something to give you this morning. We have an awesome service to give you this morning. So if you're a regular attender and you give every week, if you haven't set up reoccurring, which Noah talked yeah. about last week, which is just a really easy way to yeah. give. And hey, if you're a regular attender and you haven't been to the giving platform online, I'd encourage you to do so. There's a really cool thing in there. There's a little drop down menu. Um, and we don't often get to dive in. We, we get to dive into some of the special giving opportunities, but there's a lot of uh, different funds that you can give specifically to the church, to global missions um, that are always, they're always in there. Um, so if you haven't, uh, just, just take a second, go in there and look. I think it's cool to see um, that nice little running list of, of all the things that we do. So, hey, you might hear in the background, the room is full. We're so excited that you're joining us online. Um, and hey, we just wanted to pray for our service that we're about to dive into. Uh, before we throw to it. So, Pastor Jake, would you pray for us? Yeah, let me pray for us. Yeah. Father God, thank you so, so much for this morning, God. In this season of difficulty, we can still come together and worship you and hear from you, God. You are such a good God. Even in the difficult times, you are such a good God. This morning, I pray as we hear a word about love. Gosh, we need more love in this world. We need more love in our hearts. I pray that as Mark speaks, that you would speak to our hearts, that you would open us up to give us a word that only you can give, God. I pray we open up our hearts, open up our minds, open up our ears right now to hear what you are going to say. And, and as we pray for giving, God, we have so much to give. I pray that we never forget that, that we have so much to give, so many different ways to give, so many different things to give, God. So again, as you open up for this service, Open us up to give, to give something. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter where it's going, God. We have things to give. You have gifted us things that we are called to give unto others. And I pray that we would be open and ready to do that, God. I pray for the service this morning. I pray you would speak to each and every person on the online campus, here in the in-person campus. God, speak to us this morning. We are ready for your word. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, the room is full, our hearts are full, and we hope that translates to you online. Thanks for joining us, and let's throw it to service. were clothed in fire. A silver thread drawn forth from darkness, a spark of light announced the blaze. An endless void at last surrendered, and at first 
the first of days. In gilded panoply arose flaming cherubim, lords of stars, form without matter, thought without weight, descending the ladder to the humblest of paths. And then divine touched flesh, touched sight, the race of man, brought forth from clod, with hand and mind to rule the realm, and soul to see the face of God. But void still raged to claim its child, that ancient bent and stiffened neck, and through deceit and crooked tongue bound up man's gifted breath. Thus the sons of Adam fell to Tartarus' shallow graves, to wait upon the dying flame when all return from whence they came. But long before the cosmos danced, or ere God set the skies ablaze, there was love, all in all, God from God, the Word proclaimed. Weaving flesh and soul and bone, the Word assumed man's wounded frame to draw the deadly poison out and carry sin's unlawful claim. But death would forge the sword to strike, the shining heel of heaven's sun. That ancient wound infected still, inflicted on the Holy One. Yet sin, for all its boasts and lies, bereft of power, was trampled down. For darkness cannot overcome the fire of salvation's crown. Creation groaning in decay rose up anew, alive, reborn. The word who called life from the deep broke the shame forevermore. There was a rumor that the world was born in love. A whisper spoken true, the word, the life, the risen one, remaking all things new. Hey! 
it's Miss Allison with another special message for you. Shaving cream is no good inside the can. It's completely useless inside the can. Here you can see that this glass is about the same size as the can. So I'm just going to start squirting the shaving cream into the glass so you can see it better. It's really full. It looks like the same amount of shaving cream that's in the can will just fill this glass, but as you can see, I've hardly squirted this at all and it's already overflowing. It's coming out the top. It's too much. Shaving cream is just like love. Once outside the can, the shaving cream can give you a good shave. Ask your dad or your grandpa or your uncle. It's great for shaving. But on the inside, it can't do anything for anybody. And that's just like love. The love that you have inside has to come out. It has to be expressed. And guess what else? If you ask your dad or your grandpa or your uncle, the shave is so much better, so much easier with the shaving cream. It goes much smoother and it just feels so much better. It glides and slides right across their face. And that's like love too. When your love comes out through the things that you you know, say and do and the way you talk and the way you act. Life is easier because love makes everything better and smoother. When you have love for God, it's easy to share that with others. It's so easy for it to come out and overflow to your friends and your family and your teachers and your classmates and your team and your scout troops and everyone you see every day. <laughs> it's making a funny noise too. And do you see what else is happening? As I'm talking, it's like multiplying, it's growing, it's, it's getting bigger and bigger. And that's what happens to love too. When we're filled with God's love, we need to share that love. Don't keep your love inside. Let it out and let it overflow. See you next time. Welcome Emmanuel family to church. If you're a part of the online campus, we want to welcome you as well. You may notice um, if you're a part of the online campus or obviously if you're in the building that we're growing. There's more and more people that are coming to church and we're thrilled about that, but we want to encourage you to remember to social distance. So if you're going to sit with your family, that's great, but try to make sure that there's, you know, some distance between you and other families. We're adding chairs and we just want everybody to feel safe. But um, I have to tell you, it tells you my state of mind this morning because when Miss Allison is, you know, all that shaving cream is just going everywhere, all I could think about was that uh, Cool Whip. <laughs> hey, you just kind of do that. And I was like, I should have eaten breakfast this morning. You know what I mean? Again, welcome to worship. We're in a series of messages, um, the seven greatest words of love, which are the seven last words of Jesus on the cross. And last week we looked at the word of assurance, and I, if you didn't hear that message, you're going to want to go back and listen to it, because that's probably one of the most important messages you will ever hear, and that is, how do you know that you're saved? How do you know that you're going to heaven? And the week before that was the word of forgiveness, and today I want to talk to you about what Jesus has to say about being a loving person. So the third word is the word of of love. If you have your Bibles with you, I want you to turn to um, John's Gospel, chapter 19, verses 25 and 26. I'll be reading out of the New Living Translation. As you're getting there, let me just mention a couple things about love. How many of you find it that love is challenging sometimes, and love is complex, and love is confusing? 
How many of you discovered that it's easy to say you want to be a loving person, it's much harder to actually be a loving person? So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to think about a person that is particularly challenging for you to love. It may be the person next to you. Right? How many of you know that the people that you're closest to are oftentimes the most challenging to love? Why is it so hard to love people? I think sometimes it's because we think that love is a feeling. Is love a feeling? It can be. But is that all there is to love? We've been taught in the church that love is not a feeling, love is a verb. It's something that we do. And yet, from a functional level, oftentimes, we still think on the inside that love is a feeling. And of course, there are different dimensions to love, right? I mean, you love your dog, you love your cat, you love being outdoors, you love Cool Whip, you love your spouse, you love your children, you love your job. But how does all that flesh out? If you're an employer, how do you love your employees and still hold them accountable? Have you ever had to terminate an employee? How do you do that in a loving way? How do you love someone in your family who has addictive behavior? Is it possible to overlove somebody? How do you love people who are over controlling? How do you love people who are too dependent upon you? This morning is about answering those questions and so much more. This morning is really about loving the way Jesus loved and figuring out how all that fleshes out in the everyday relationships that you and I have. So would you stand please as we read God's word together from John chapter 15, verses 25 and 26. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among the four of them. They also took his robe, but it was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said, rather than tearing it apart, let's throw dice for it. This fulfilled the scripture that says they divided my garments among themselves and threw dice for my clothing. So that's what they did. Now, standing near the cross were Jesus' mother, his mother's sister. Her name was Salome. Salome had at least two boys, James and John. Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, John, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. Holy Spirit, at this moment, make these words live inside of us. Help us to not only understand what the word says, but help us to apply it to our lives, particularly as it comes to love, because that's the whole point of the Christian life. God, bring to mind one person in our lives that we're finding it difficult to love these days, and help us throughout the course of the next few moments to figure out how to love the difficult one. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. In these verses, we are given a very tender glimpse of how Jesus loved his mom. By this point, Mary's a widow. Church tradition says that um, Joseph died somewhere in her 20s or 30s. And so Mary did not have the advantage that we have today of Social Security benefits, of you know going through Montgomery County or Bucks County, depending upon where you live, and getting some sort of benefits. I mean, she just depended upon the generosity of other people and her family system. And Jesus looks at Mary, who is standing next to John, and transfers 
the sonship and says to her basically these words, I'm dying. I can't take care of you the way you're supposed to be taken care of. So I'm giving you a new son. He's standing right next to you. He's your nephew. And he's going to treat you the rest of his life like you're his mom. Church tradition says that Mary lived another 12 years beyond Jesus' death and resurrection. So Mary died somewhere around her late 50s or early 60s. But for the next 12 years, John would take her into his home and treat her like his mother. So the question is, what do we learn from John, or what do we learn from Jesus about how to love people? I see three things. Let's begin. Number one, to love like Jesus loves is to take care of your family first. Take care of your family first. When Jesus saw his mother standing there. You know, sometimes it's easier to love everybody else except your family. I've known ministers through the years who have poured themselves into their congregation but gave the leftovers to their spouse or family. And in so doing, their kids grew up feeling like dad or mom gave more to other people than they did to us. Sometimes we use being involved in the community or even being involved in church as an excuse because things aren't so good at home, so we try to look good and we try to love people outside because it's very challenging to love people on the inside, and yet they feel neglected. To neglect your family is to not love the way Jesus loved. That's why 1 Timothy 5.8 says, if anybody does not provide for his relatives, especially for his immediate family, he has denied the faith. And listen to this, it is worse than an unbeliever. Wow. So how did Jesus love his mom the way you and I ought to love other people? Three things. Focused attention, meeting practical needs, and emotional support. Those are the big three. And that's exactly what Jesus did with Mary. Focused attention. The Bible says when Jesus saw Mary. Now, I don't know what you think when you think of the word saw, but, you know, it's sort of like, you know, we see lots of people, right? You can look around this room and you can see, you know, another 100, 150 people here. But the reality is the, the Greek word for saw means to see intently. It was a focused attention. You ever heard the phrase, I see you? It's not just referring to, I see you. It's, I know you. I'm focusing my attention on you. I was really bad at this when our girls were growing up. I have to be honest and just say that. You know, every Friday night, we would have like a pizza and movie night. And because I was outnumbered and there was three girls in our household, even our dog was a girl, they would always pick these movies that appealed to them, right? And so because, you know, I'm the dad, I'm like, yes, I love seeing Bambi again, right? And so here's what would happen is that, um, you know, the lights would get dark and we'd all be sitting on the couch or I'd be on the floor and the girls would be next to me, but I'd always have a book hidden along the side and I'd pull out the book or I'd have a computer and I'd return a couple emails and invariably, one of the girls throughout the course of the movie, I mean, they're just kind of like, we're all together as a family focused on watching this movie and eating pizza. And they'd look over and they'd see me and they'd be like, Dad, what are you doing? This is family night. And of course, I'd get the eye from Holly. You know what I'm saying? You know what that eye is, right? They teach that in, in you know, wife school. <laughs> and, um, and so, you know, I'd put away the book or I'd put away the computer and about 20 minutes later, I'm just going to read a paragraph. But you know, the message that I was sending, honestly, to our girls was, I'm with you, but I'm not really with you. And man, I have a great relationship with our daughters, but you know, 
they were honest with me in telling me that as they grew up. They just said, Dad, I, I, we hated it when you did that. We never really felt like you were there. Can I tell you something? It's so easy to do that today. It's so easy. I mean, it sounds so basic, right, to give people focused attention. But the reality is it's very challenging these days because we have this thing in our hand called a smartphone. Right? And so what are we doing? We have this tendency to look at the phone and, and oh yeah, 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 okay, but we're not really actually focusing. The message that we're sending to the people who we should be loving is, I'm sort of engaged in you, but I don't really see you. One of the best things that you can do to show love to people, as crazy as this is, just simply put down your phone. Or if you're sitting there watching TV and a conversation begins, just put pause on, on the TV and just talk and, and look at each other. The second way that Jesus loved his mom was by meeting practical needs, right? Practical needs is, is that he's dying. He needs to transfer responsibility for Mary to somebody else. So here's John. And he, and he says, hey, this is your son. That's just meeting a practical need. There's, again, there's no social security. There's no, you know, any kind of benefits. And she needs a protector, the way that we need, meet practical needs today is, if you're a parent, you need to meet the practical needs of your children, right? I mean, basic food, clothing, shelter, those kinds of things. But you also need to go beyond that and to teach them basic life skills, right? Both of our girls, as they were late teenagers, said to me, Dad, will you show us how to change a tire? Bethany, our oldest daughter, said, Dad, I'd like to know how to change the oil in my car. And so we'd get underneath the car, I'd show her how to change the oil, all those kinds of things. In other words, your job as parents is to teach your kids basic life skills to take care of them so that they get out of the world when they launch and they're actually able to feel competent in many different things. You know what else is meeting a practical need these days? Is by having life insurance, by having a will. I don't know if the statistics have changed that much, but the reality is about 10, 15 years ago, I, I read an article that said 40% of all Americans have a will. 40%. One of the ways that you can relax your family is to make provision if you should die prematurely that they know what's going on. I've said this before twice in messages through the years. I'll say it again. I have a dead letter for Holly. Dear Holly, if you're reading this letter, I'm dead. <laughs> I just updated it last month. Here's the list of the five people you need to call first. Here's where the insurance policies are. By the way, I want you to get remarried again. If you love me, get married again. Man, that's hard to say. Right? But that's part of... That's part of setting your family up for success is nailing down all the things that you and I think we have time for that we may or may not. Meeting emotional needs. Jesus meant the emotional needs of his mom. How did he do that? Just two words, dear woman. Dear woman, this is your son, that's a tender way of expressing love in the Greek. But here's what's really interesting. It wasn't the first time in the Gospels that we see that Jesus said that to his mom. Do you know where the first time was? At the wedding feast at Cana of Galilee. When Mary came to Jesus and said to him, uh, son, they've run out of wine. Hint, hint, what are you going to do about it? And Jesus says to her, dear woman, my time has not yet come. The same exact phrase. Now, here's what I think. I think Jesus did that on purpose. I think Jesus said, dear woman, this is your son, because he wanted Mary to go back to remember the first time he said that. You know what Jesus, I think, was saying to Mary? The first time... You wanted something from me. I said, my time has not yet come. My time has now come. I need to go now. I love you. I've completed my work. 
I've made provision. I love you. Let me go. Who in your family could benefit from a little bit of tender love right now? Some emotional support. During this COVID moment, I think we should be exceedingly gracious, kind, loving, and merciful to everybody around us, but especially in our family, because we're in an anxious system. Not, no, nobody's at their best at this moment, nobody. We're all struggling. Things are getting better, but not, not soon enough for me, right? There's somebody in your family system who could really benefit from you just being a little bit more kind and gentle, loving and tender, and giving them emotional support. So the first thing that Jesus teaches us about love is your family's first. The Bible says you're worse than an unbeliever if you don't take care of your own family. So family's first. The second thing is that Jesus teaches us about love is we are to treat other believers as family. Standing there beside the disciple, he loved. It's not enough to care for the needs of your immediate family because God has placed you in another family that you're to treat just like your immediate family. You've heard the phrase, blood is thicker than water. I got a new phrase for you, grace is thicker than genetics. I mentioned a few moment ago, uh, moments ago that, you know, Jesus had, or Mary and Joseph had other children besides Jesus. Actually, Jesus was one of seven. Mary and Joseph had six other children four boys and two girls. They were the half-brothers and sisters to Jesus. And I've been thinking about this. How come Jesus didn't say to one of his four brothers, take care of mom? He said it to John. Why did he do that? Because Jesus' four brothers and two sisters were not believers. They... They didn't believe that Jesus was and is who he said he was and is. And so it wasn't until after the resurrection that Jesus' brothers and sisters got on board and realized that he was the son of God, right? And so Jesus' half-brother, James, became the head of the church in Jerusalem. But standing at the cross, none of his brothers and sisters thought that Jesus was the son of God. And so in this handoff, Jesus steps over his own brothers and sisters and says to, <coughs> says to John, I, I want you to take care of mom because you get it. And right now, my brothers and sisters don't get it. Which raises something that I think is very, very meaningful, and that is sometimes you will have more in common with the family of God than you do your own immediate family right? I mean, sometimes you connect better with other brothers and sisters in Christ than you do your own family system, because you and your family system, if you're a believer, they, they may be going in opposite directions. That doesn't mean you shouldn't love your physical, biological brothers and sisters and family, but it does mean that when it comes time to values and connections, you're not always on the same page. So we ought to love each other the same way we do our physical family. You know, that's sometimes, sometimes in the church you've heard the phrase, you know, hi, brother so-and-so, or hi, sister so-and-so. Well, you know what? We're going to be spending all of eternity together. And so right here is practice for all of eternity. So how does this play out? It plays out the same exact way as your physical family. In the body of Christ, in the family of God, when you're connected with your spiritual family, we ought to have our focused attention, we ought to meet practical needs, and we ought to give emotional support. So I've been thinking about this in the past 12 months 
since the pandemic, Emmanuel Church has given away more than $80,000 to you, individuals who have been struggling, to families who have been struggling, and to organizations. We've done a couple food drives through the Benevolence Fund. We've given away a considerable amount of money. We've given to Man on Main Street. We've given to a number of organizations to simply express we love you and these are practical needs that we want to take care of. Number three, to love like Jesus loves means do not let your pain and unmet needs blind you to other people's pain and their unmet needs. When I'm in pain, I can be a baby. You know what I mean? Oh, Holly, can you get me another blanket, please? My body's all achy. Could you get me some more tea? Oh, I drank the last of the ginger ale. Can, can you run out to the store and get me more ginger ale? And, and it's too fizzy, so shake it up and get all the fizzy out of it just so I can have the ginger ale without the fizziness. It makes me hiccup. Did you just say amen? You just said amen. Okay. Here's what I want you to see, right? So Jesus is on the cross. He's experiencing the most tortuous death imaginable. But he's looking around and he's talking to the thief on the cross. Today you'll be with me in paradise. He's looking at his mom. I'm going to take care of you, mom. This is your son. Jesus could have easily said, I'm in such great pain, I can't deal with anybody else's pain. Isn't that just like us? When we're in pain, when we have so many unmet needs, it is so easy to focus on our own pain and our own unmet needs and say, I can't worry about anybody else, i got to fix me. The strategy of the devil is to make you think that you're always crippled so that you're not able to ever help anybody else. I'll help somebody else when I'm healed. How many of you discovered you're never going to be 100% healed on this side of heaven? In your pain, help other people in their pain. And you'll discover a healing along the way for you. So here's how, here, how does that work out? Here's how it works out in our church. We have people who have gone through addiction who now lead classes to help other people out of their addictions. We have people who have lost family members who now lead grief share who help other people through their pain of losing family members. We have people in our church who have gone through divorce so now they lead groups to help other people get through their divorce. These are the heroes because they have taken their pain and turned it into somebody else's gain. And so here's my question to you. How are you doing that in your own life? Because to love like Jesus loves is really to turn your tragedy, to turn your pain, to turn your own unmet needs and love other people in the middle of all that you're going through for the glory of God. Let's get back to the difficult person. How can you love somebody who's really challenging for you to love at this moment? What would it mean to focus attention on them. How many of you know you have kids that act out and the reason why they act out is they're not being seen? Sometimes what people need to really settle them down is for you to just see them. I hear you. I see your pain. I see what you're going through. They need acknowledgement. 
Are there some practical needs that you can help that difficult person? You know, if you're married, sometimes a spouse may be acting out and just be irritable because they feel like they're all alone in the marriage. Is, are there some practical things you can do to just take some heat off of them? What emotional support could you give that person who is so challenging to you? Hurt people hurt people? Oftentimes, the people that are most irritating to us are people who are actually operating out of their own pain, and so we need to look beyond their pain to say, I'm just going to love you. Because nothing is more healing than unconditional love. It settles us down. It brings us to a place of saying, I'm seen, I'm valued, I'm loved. So here's my challenge for you this week, this third week of Lent. Push in to some difficult people and look beyond their pain to say, what do they really need and how can I really help them? If you find yourself one of those people whose priorities have gotten out of whack and you're helping everybody else but your own family, maybe you need to readjust your priorities and say, hey, I think I need to spend some time focusing on what's most important in life because I want my kids to know me. I want my spouse to know me. I want my, my nieces and nephews to know me and just kind of invest. Sometimes it just may be so much energy that you need to pour back into your family because you've been pouring it into everybody else. But this is what I know. To love like Jesus is to actually have great fulfillment. Do you know that you're loved by Jesus 100%? Do you know that Jesus sees you? He sees you. Nobody else may see you, but Jesus sees you. Jesus has promised to meet every single need in your life. And Jesus has promised to always be there. There is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. If you don't know this, Jesus, this is a good opportunity during Lent to just open up your life to the Lord. Let's bow our heads together. If the timing is right for you today, if there's a tug on your own heart that says, I want to know Jesus, not just in concept, but I really want to know Jesus on a deep, intimate relationship because he stretched out his arms and he showed me how much he loved me on the cross. Why don't you just pray this prayer after me? Dear Jesus, I open up my life to you right now. Please forgive me of my sins. I receive forgiveness and cleansing right now because of your blood on the cross. And from this moment on, I promise to follow you all the rest of my life. In your name I pray. Amen.
great is God's love. You may be seated. Today is the third Sunday of Lent, and as a community, we get to share communion together. Don't worry, online campus, we're not leaving you out, so I'd love for you all at home to take this opportunity to gather some communion elements. Maybe some juice that's close by or some bread or whatever food and drink are nearby. God's going to cover it all, so don't worry about that part. So take these few minutes to, to gather that stuff. It's your heart and intention that God desires. For our in-house community, we're going to do things a little bit differently. Uh, and I'm going to explain that uh, in a moment. And we're going to partake together after the service on the way out. So I'll explain that. But first, let me ask a question. Why do we partake in communion? What is, what is the Eucharist all about? Well, it's the same reason that God sent his son to live and to die and to rise again, right? It's the same reason Jesus faced 40 days of temptation in the desert. It's the same reason Jesus is coming again. It's because of love. It's because of love. I wore my special love socks today. It says, I love you. This is from me to Jesus and from Jesus to us. It's because of love. And communion is a sacred moment something unexplainable and mysterious about it. It's one of the sacraments that we partake in where the veil between us and God it almost disappears. God wants to meet you in this moment today here in this church in your homes in your cars, wherever you're with us today, God wants to meet you. God wants to meet us with repentant hearts. One of the things that it talks about in the Bible is when we come to the communion table, we need to come with repentant hearts. So I'd like if we could, I'd just say just a quick prayer and you can follow along with my words in your own hearts. God, without you, I'm not worthy. There are times when we've chosen our own paths instead of yours. There have been times that we have turned our backs on you, and we are sorry. Please forgive us and teach us a better way. We love you. Amen. So as we think about communion, I want you to think about four things. Why do we do this? We affirm our identity in Christ. When we partake of the bread and the juice, we do so in alignment with Christ. He is ours, and we are his. And if you don't know this Jesus yet, he is waiting for you. This could be your moment. Number two, we commune with Jesus. Over the centuries, there have been many questions raised as to exactly how Christ is present in the Lord's Supper. What a mystery. But we believe that the Lord's Supper is a time when we commune with Jesus. And Jesus is with us today. Number three, we commune with each other. In person, here in the building, at home, together as families, but really we are united in the love of Christ. And communion gives us an opportunity to reflect on our, com our community as a community, our unity together. Number four, we proclaim the good news of Christ's death and resurrection. Now for our online campus, I'm going to read through 1 Corinthians 11, 24 through 26, and I will instruct, instruct you when to eat and when to drink. And for our in-house community, take this time to meditate on God's word as I read it. On 
the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So folks at home, take and eat. And in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. So take and drink. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Emmanuel, you are loved by God. And it is this love that unites us today. So for our folks in-house, this is, this is the way it's going to look. We have a special way for you and your family to participate in communion. Okay? So outside the main doors and outside the back door, the pastors are going to be there. And we will have communion cups for you. So we'll be out there waiting. And each family, you find kind of the first open pastor that's there. And you can bring your family up. And we will lead that process with you together. And you don't need to rush to the doors. There'll, there'll be time. And, and really what you can do is take this time to ex talk about this as a family. If you have little ones, explain what's happening. Why are we doing this? Talk about what it means God loves us, that God will do this for us. But before we go, let me dismiss us with prayer. Let's bow our heads. Father, we love you. Father, we open our hearts to your love that you offer so freely to us. It's unbelievable. thank you. God, as we go from this place, wherever we are, if we're leaving from our couches to go into the kitchen, if we're leaving from this building to go home or go out to lunch, God, we, we welcome you with us. We welcome your love. We want to be transformed by it so that we can transform the world with you. God, we thank you. In your son's name. are dismissed. Go in God's blessing. You are loved.
daughter. I'm stealing your daughter. Okay. Well, Bill, I'll grab Casey. And then the thing is still there. We'll see you.